So the Edward was born on 1004 AD, the son of King Alfred II and Emma of Normandy. He came from a long line of kings. The blood of kings was believed to run in the male veins of that line. Those who believed it stood apart, higher than the ordinary mortals. Edward the Confessor has widely been cast as saintly king, but it was King Edward himself or his courtier who planted the idea that he was a holy king who worked miracles. This boosted his mystique. Authentic charters from Normandy from 1030s reveal that even in the nut's lifetime as a king of England that time the Norman people recognized Edward as England's rightful king in one charter dated 1033-34 he adopts the title king Edward and grant land to England to the monks of Mont Saint Michael and abbey on the border of Normandy and Brittany the fact that he did so signaled his conviction that he would make good of his royal title and ability to grant lands not yet in his possessions new researches are showing that confessor was actively promoting his claim to the english throne from the age of 12 in 1036 after the nut's death edward assembled his own fleet and headed for england which could not decide which of nut's two sons could inherit the throne Hoping to meet with a party that supported his own claim, Edward ran into opposition. He fought them off but was forced to return to Normandy again. Undaunted at the setback, Edward kept up the pressure until 1041 when he again crossed the channel with a fleet. This time he had battled and Edward inherited the throne. Edward now began driving home the message that he was a savior sent by God to resurrect the ancient line of kings. and usher in a golden age he proclaimed these ideas by the original means of including the word peace on his inaugural coinage and by delaying his coronation by almost a year to hold it on easter day in 1043 the christ like symbolism was striking returning from the grave or exile which was often linked to death edward came to redeem his people from danish captivity Peace was a manifesto and that he intended to implement according to his contemporary biographer one of the first thing which edward did was to arrange peace treaties with the lesser kings or princes of the british isles and with the neighboring powers who shared the britain's seaways meanwhile he rewarded the agents who had helped him including earl godwin and punished those who had not such as his own mother emma Early in his reign, having established peace with neighbors, Edward ordered the building of huge fleet and assembled it at Sandwich in Kent, his forward naval base. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle remarked in 1045 that it was the largest fleet anyone had ever seen. It is an important piece of evidence revealing Edward's military strategy. In the time of Edward's father, Alfred Viking raiders from Denmark and Norway were becoming a menace. Between the 990s and 1016, raiders had arrived almost every year, and there was a chance that the pattern would resume now that England was no longer under Danish control. Mindful of his father's troubles and raids remembered from boyhood, Edward immediately set to guarding the coast. When the king of Denmark requested ships to assist him in the struggle against the king of Norway, Edward refused, allowing his rivals to fight their own battles and weaken each other. While laying the foundation for the lasting peace, Edward did everything he could to procure an heir. When it became clear that his marriage to Edith of Wessex would produce no children, he sent a mission to Germany to negotiate the return of his nephew Edward the Exile like Edward the Confessor his nephew had gone into exile as an infant in 1016 in modern term one might say that he was next in line for the throne it is the testimony to the power of blood entitlement that he was recalled after 40 years of foreign land just as Edward himself had been recalled after the quarter of a century in Normandy Unfortunately the nephew died immediately upon his return but Edward adopted his son Edgar and gave him the title Atling meaning he was of the blood it was a title reserved for the sons of the kings and it signified that Edgar was to be regarded as Edward's heir 
Though much of his reign was peaceful, Edward did meet opposition and his attempt to enforce royal justice in the lawless north were unwelcome. In 1065, a rebellion in York targeted his deputy Earl Tosting. The rebel then marched south to confront Edward himself. Edward wanted to fight but his commanders melted away. His health failed and he died in January 1066. A poem written on his death described him as a righteous and skillful in counsel, qualities that had been noted even at the beginning of his reign, impressed that he had ruled over all the people of Britain. The poet honored him for being a king who had defended homeland, country, and nation. Neither his father nor his successor succeeded on that front. Another point wrote that Edward's enemy feared him, and no one dared to break his peace. Thanks.